Let's do some exercises from tracing for loops worksheet number one. Um, I, let's start with uh, this first for loop. We have the loop variable i. It's okay to use single letters as variable names in for loops for good style. I don't mind. In fact, it's very traditional to use the, the variable name i. Uh, this part of the for loop int i equals 1 is called the initializing expression and it executes first. So I'm going to uh, store a 1 under the variable i. And then the computer checks the control expression, which of course is the middle part of this for loop, separated by semicolons here. Is i less than 5? It sure is. That's a true. So we do go through the loop. And we see out i, which is 1. So a 1 prints out along with a comma and a space. But because there's no endl here, the, the blinking cursor is not moved to the next line of your output. So it's still kind of waiting right here, waiting for the next uh, piece of output to be printed out. The computer then hits this curly brace, which tells it to go back up to the top of the for loop. But because this is the second iteration of the for loop, we do not set i equal to 1, but rather we come in from the right side and we execute this step expression, also known as the incrementing expression, the third part of a for loop. So this uh, part right here tells you to i++, which we all know adds 1 to the variable i, i making it a 2. And then the computer continues in here from the, coming in from the right and it checks out this control expression. Is i less than 5? Yes, it still is. So because this is true, we do go through the loop. I repeat, we do not ever do the initializing expression uh, ever again. It was a one-time only thing. Okay, now we're in the loop and we see out i. Well, the value stored in i is now 2, so a 2 prints out, along with, of course, a comma and a blank space. We uh, go back up to the top of the for loop, we come in from the right side. We do this i++, making this a 3. And we check the control expression. Is one, i less than 5? Yes, it is. So we do the c out again. i is currently a 3. We get our comma. Um, there are supposed to be spaces here and here, if I were being really accurate. We come up to the top of the for loop. We come in from the right. i++ is up to 4 and then uh, i less than 5. Is 4 less than 5? It sure is. So we do go through the loop again. i is now 4, so that prints out. We go back up to the top of the for loop. i plus plus is to 5. And we carefully ask ourselves, is 5 less than 5? No, it's not. That's false. So we don't go through the loop again, and we're done. We're done with uh, this first part of the program. Uh, and by the way, there was a comma that printed here along with that last four. So our output, if I wanted to make it uh, a little bit more neat and accurate, it, would, it was a one, a comma, a blank space, a two, a comma, a blank space, a three, a comma, a blank space, and a four and a comma. Even though that looks odd, it is what it is. That's the output from this first for loop. Now there is a C out endel. So the blinking cursor, just for the record, would move down and be poised and ready to print something right below that one. Now let's do uh, the second part of this exercise here, this for loop. Okay, we have another variable named j that's used in this for loop. So uh, j is right here, and it's initialized to 2 because of this uh, initializing expression. 2 is less than or equal to 11. So this statement starts its display with the number 2 and a comma and a space. This time we go back up to the top of the for loop and we come in from the right side. Instead of i++ or j++ here, we do j plus equals 2. We know that this is the compound operator. It takes whatever this is, a 2, and adds it into j. So we now have j stepping up to the value 4. Is 4 less than or equal to 11? Yes, it is. So we uh, go through the loop. And we uh, see out j, so we see out the, the current value of j, which is 4. 
along with a comma and a space. And we come back up here and we add two more to j, making it six. Six is less than 11, so the six prints out with a comma. We add two more to j, making it eight. Eight is less than or equal to 11, so the eight and a comma print out. And we add two more to j, which is a 10. Still, the control expression is true here. So the 10 prints out with a comma. We add two more to that, making it 12. Is 12 less than or equal to 11? No, it's not. That's false. So we don't do any more C out. And uh, this statement then displayed 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 with commas. And there were spaces in there after the commas to be really neat and accurate. Let's circle the final values stored for each of these variables. That'll make it easier for me to grade and reflect whether you uh, executed it correctly. Do note here that j ended up being 12. Even though the number 11 was used here, j is 12. And that is a, a fact. OK, the next uh, little part of this, k. Yet another variable name used in this third loop, k, is initialized to 5. Notice this is a greater than symbol, not the less than symbols that we saw earlier. 5 is greater than 0, so this code starts with a, a displaying the value 5. k minus minus knocks that down to 4. 4 is greater than 0, and I think you can see the pattern here. It's going to print something like that. And I'm not going to finish this exercise. I'll leave that for you to do as part of your homework. Taking a quick look at this next section, m. m is initialized to 0. Then, because you are allowed to declare a loop variable outside of the loop and then use it here, in this case, you would not then put the word int there like we did with uh, the word int here. It's just another way of doing it. So m is now equal to 2. And 2 is less than 10, so we go through this. I'm going to ex uh, help you analyze this control expression here in this if statement. OK, 2 divided by 2. What's the remainder of 2 divided by 2? The remainder is 0. Is 0 equal to 0? True. When you have a true and it was something, you do have to check the something. Let's check it out. What is 2 divided by 3? Uh, what's the remainder of that? That's a little tricky. What's 2 mod 3? Well, uh, do it as long division. 2 divided by 3. 3 goes into 2 0 times. 0 times 3 is 0. We do subtraction like your second grade teacher taught you. 2 minus 0 is 2. And that is the answer, folks. 2 mod 3 is equal to 2. It's the remainder of 2. In other words, any small number modded by a big number, small mod big, is always equal to the small number. So is this true here? Is 2 equal to 0? No, it's not. And because we have a false in this and, the whole thing is false and we don't break. All of that work just to, to know that we don't break. Instead, we come back up to the top of the for loop and we do m++. Okay, m is up to 3 now. And we have to erase all this scratch work. And is 3 less than 10? It sure is. So I'm going to stop here and let it up to you to analyze this if statement. Plugging the value 3 this time in for m to check to see if this part of the and is true or false versus this part of the uh, and expression, see if that's true or false. And if both of them are true, then you're going to hit the break, which breaks you out of this for loop, and you see out m. So whatever m is at that moment when there's a break, that's what you're going to uh, fill in right here as your answer. This last part of this uh, exercise, um, it doesn't look too tricky. We're using the loop variable n and starting at 1, plus plusing up until we hit 5. And the sum plus equals n, I think this ends up 
adding up the numbers 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot dot dot. At some point it stops adding. I'll let that uh, out there for you to figure out. But this is a, a nice practical for loop that adds up a bunch of numbers.